When we're designing a new product, we go through many phases. First, we'll just roughly describe the product. How many voices, what will it cost, how many filters, VCOs, uh, digital uh, oscillators, do we want um, you know, wavetables, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, as we start figuring that out, the next thing we do is we start scribbling out really rough front panel ideas. We decide, well, is this more of a keyboard player's instrument, like, you know, maybe the Prophet 6 or the OB6, or is this going to be more of a tweaker's product, which would be, you know, like the uh, Rev2 or the Prophet X. I think the common theme that we're, we're pretty good is we always try to simplify things to avoid hidden features, to avoid modal operation where this works if you go into this mode and then this becomes this and then if you hit this double tap and then this becomes this we like to keep it as straightforward and obvious and simple as possible uh, Andrew usually does you know the final layouts uh, based on our rough drawings that we always do by committee with lots of arguments about which features are in and which features are out generally speaking uh, you want a synthesizers interface its front panel uh, to reflect as much of what's going on with the current sound the current patch as possible so we're always trying to strike a balance uh, between giving people the the most visual feedback the most information about what's going on with the patch and giving them controls like pots that feel good in the musical sense, uh, in the performance sense. The problem is with a programmable synthesizer that doesn't always work. Um, your, the settings on the front panel may not reflect what's actually currently happening with the patch you've recalled from memory. The setting in memory may not correspond to what that pot is currently set to the value that that pot is currently set to you could do things i suppose like you know, motorized pots or motorized faders uh but that adds a level of complexity and cost to the instrument then especially instruments like ours that tend to have lots of knobs and lots of switches on them we just it, it, there's a lot of discussion, you know, with the specific placements and, you know, then we actually get into the UI side of, well, what kind of switches, what kind of knobs, uh, what's the overall look going to be, how's it compared to our other sense, do we want a new look? Sometimes it'll be a great feature, somebody else suggests, but we decide, well, you know, if we do that, then this becomes a little too modal and we have to add three switches and then we have to make it screen oriented instead of just grab a knob and turn it, so yeah, I think we'll leave that one out. Other times somebody will come up with an idea is, you know, oh, this is really easy. Just with one little switch, we could add this really cool feature, so we'll put it in. And, and of course, we've been doing this for, you know, 40 years, so, you know, we've got a pretty good handle on it. I think the Pro 3 probably is, is the closest we've come so far to kind of an ideal subtractive synth user interface. Uh, and I would guess that you would probably be seeing more things sort of born out of that design uh, in the future from us. Mm -hmm.